Thank you for joining me for another episode of Sam's Tech Stuff. Today we're going to take a look at the custom server build I did for a surveillance PC and one of the cameras that I'm going to use in my home surveillance setup. Before we get to that, if you're interested in computer builds, server builds like this, definitely consider getting subscribed to the channel. You can click on the little bell down in the right hand corner to get email updates anytime new videos hit the channel. So today we're looking at the custom server that I built for video surveillance. This is going to be a rack mountable server that I'm gonna put in my home rack that is basically going to control all of the cameras that I set up around the house and in the garage. What I'll be doing is running Windows 10 64-bit with the Blue Iris software installed. That's gonna be the DVR or PVR software that is actually going to do all of the recording and camera controls. So the reason that I set this up was I wasn't really thrilled with paying a monthly fee or a yearly fee for having all of the video footage being safely stored and secured. I really don't like the idea of having that type of footage go up to the cloud. So I built this server to basically store everything local on site. It's completely in my control. I can do whatever I need with it and none of the cameras have to go out to the internet. I will have a separate VLAN for the cameras, but I don't have to worry about necessarily securing them uh, from an internet perspective. And I also don't have to worry about them ever getting hacked or taken control of, which is nice. This machine was quite cheap to build. I don't have to pay monthly or yearly forever and ever and ever in terms of a service cost. I never have to rely on there being an internet connection or anything like that. This will run as long as I have power and the network inside of my house is powered on and working, which in my opinion is a huge benefit. So in terms of running these, I basically chose Blue Iris as the software. That's one of the best ones that you can get out there. It does have a licensing fee, but it's arguably uh, basically the lowest you, know, you can pay for great software. Uh, so I did opt to purchase one of those licenses. The way that the system works is that you'll use your CPU and if you have an Intel chip, your integrated HD chip to process all of the video. There are a lot of different things you can do with the video. You can save it in H.264 or X.265, depending on what your needs are and the type of hardware that you're running, which we can get into in a later video. But basically, you want to be running an Intel chip. You want to have an integrated HD graphics card available on that chip and a decent amount of RAM to make sure you don't run into any memory issues. So for this build, I recycled my older i5-6600K. And the reason that I did this was because I wasn't using the CPU and this CPU I actually had delitted. So the temperatures are great. As you can tell, this is only a 2U case. So the CPU cooler had to fit in there. So I won't be running one of those crazy huge dual tower Noctua coolers. I did actually opt for a Noctua cooler and it's one of those C-shaped coolers. So it's got the fan in the middle and the larger tower in the C-shape flat on top. So cooling shouldn't really be an issue here. And the other nice part about the 6600K was that it does have an integrated Intel GPU and it is overclockable. So I do plan on making use of that and probably overclocking it in the build to see how it performs. In terms of the memory, I opted for a dual dim Gale kit. This way I will have the best memory performance for the integrated GPU that I can get. The integrated GPU is going to take a lot of stress off of the CPU as the amount of cameras increases. Every time you add another stream to a DVR or PVR server like this with Blue Iris, or really probably any software, you're going to drastically increase the amount of CPU utilization. There's a lot of different techniques you can use to minimize that, but the best one that I've seen so far is by enabling the use of the integrated GPU. This type of hardware acceleration can immensely reduce the amount of CPU utilization, so I definitely want to make sure the integrated GPU is running as fast as it can be. In terms of storage, I wanted to make sure that I was running a RAID 1 array. The software on most motherboards will do RAID 1, but it's not the best, so I actually just got a very inexpensive RAID card off of eBay. It's running an LSI SAS 
9212-4i controller. This one in particular will actually control four SATA drives. In my particular configuration, you can see that there are two hard drives in there. These are actually both Toshiba P300 three terabyte hard drives. They're gonna be set up in a RAID 1 array. That way both of the drives are an exact copy of themselves. I did this in order to protect the data in case one of the drives dies. I still have another drive that has an exact copy. I can power down the server, swap the drive out and rebuild the array. That's also another reason that I opted for the RAID card as opposed to the built-in motherboard RAID is the rebuild times will be a lot faster and it's a bit more reliable. You can also see the cable management in this case was a little bit of a challenge. It is a 2U server so cables do have to go somewhere. What I tried to do was guide everything to go through the middle here and the intake fans are in the front. They'll be pushing air front to back. The hard drives do not have their own fans themselves, but they do have a grate directly in front of them for the front of the case. So they should be able to get some cool air that way. And that should keep everything running at a pretty decent temperature. I'll also note that I do run all of my servers in my rack, which is in my basement. This will generally make the temperature of almost all of my equipment running probably quite a bit lower than the average person's first floor or a data center or anything like that. So I don't have to worry too much. If you are going to build one of these and you're going to use a low profile server like this, something to you, I would definitely consider active cooling on your hard drives as they're going to be in use working 24 seven in a server like this. In terms of the motherboard, I had quite a few options I could go with. The one that I opted for was actually a Super Micro board. Love the Super Micro brand. Use a ton of their equipment. It always works out well. This is a Super Micro C7Z170M motherboard. So this is an MATX motherboard. You can tell it is pretty fully featured. It's actually got four DIMM slots. It's got one PCI by 16, a four and a one slot which is quite nice in case I do have to add extra add-in cards later, but I don't think that I will for this type of server. In terms of the power supply, the one I have in there right now is a Seasonic Focus Plus Gold model. I probably will swap this out with a different Seasonic model at some point. I think this one was one of the 650 watt units that I had. Really don't need that much for this type of server. I don't anticipate the 6600K RAID card, RAM, fans, and hard drives really using honestly any more than 150 watts maximum and I don't even think it'll be that much under load. So I'll probably look into getting something like a 450 watt Seasonic at some point. And you might remember this case. This is the iStar D214 MATX case. It's actually one of the first videos that I did on the channel. It's a great value to you server case. So I'll put the lid back on and I can show you what it looks like when it's complete. So this is what it's going to look like when it's completely built and the lid is shut. It's nice and compact, fit in great with the rest of my servers. I do like pretty much everything about this case, with the exception of the LEDs. They're a little bright. Generally what I do is not plug them in now. When I need to double check that the machine's working, I'll just ping the static IP address that I assigned to it. One thing that I definitely like about this case is there is a air vent right here. When you have an ATX power supply, which does fit in this case, by the way, so you can actually line up the power supplies fan with the grate in the case. You can actually get airflow moving throughout the power supply so it doesn't overheat. If you're running a really dense rack, that's definitely going to be important. If you're someone like me who has a relatively cool rack, it's not that important, but it's still quite a nice feature to have, especially since this case usually sells for somewhere between 60 and 80 bucks, which is pretty inexpensive. So overall, this is going to be the server that I'm gonna use for all the video capture that I end up doing. I'm pretty happy with the way that this server turned out and that I was able to recycle some of my old RAM kits and my i5-6600K. That definitely helps in terms of the overall cost of this build. If I had to guess how much it would be if I started from scratch, I would say I would probably allocate 
about 55 bucks to the power supply, about 80 to 90 bucks on the motherboard. The CPU has definitely gone down in value. I would imagine you could probably pick up a 6600K for somewhere between about 100, 150 bucks now. This one in particular is delitted by Silicon Lottery, so potentially that adds a little bit of value there since that service normally does cost about 50 bucks. But most people aren't going to go out and do that for the temperature gains, especially in a recording server like this. The RAID card I got on eBay for about, I want to say 15 bucks. I've had it for a while now and finally had a use for it, which is nice. The case itself, I believe, was about 70 bucks on sale on Newegg, uh, which is great. Definitely check out the review I have of this case on the channel. I'll link it at the top real quick. And the hard drives that I used were the Toshiba P300s. They're the three terabyte models. These ones I actually also got on sale at Newegg for about 70 bucks each. In terms of the RAM, I used basically just a generic Gale kit. This one I think was around 2400 or 2600 megahertz. This one I did buy right around 50 bucks. It was just a basic 8 gig kit. What I really wanted to make sure here was that I had a little bit more than the minimum, which would be about 4 gigs, and that I was running dual channel. That'll be important for the performance of the integrated GPU. The integrated GPU is going to allow me to run way more cameras than I would normally be able to run with just the CPU power. So definitely something to note there, if you are going to run a Blue Iris setup, you don't want an AMD GPU and you do not want an Intel Xeon. You definitely want to get something consumer grade that has that integrated GPU because it's going to allow you to run way more cameras or run them at higher resolutions. So the cost for this server, if I had to build it completely, totally without any parts that I had, would be probably between four to $500, depending on the type of sales that I would catch. So I'm pretty excited to get this server up and running. The camera that I'll be using is just a pretty cheap one that I got off of eBay basically. Uh, it does have infrared support. Let's see if we can get it to focus there. It is a dome camera and I'll be powering it over PoE. This is a 1080p camera. It runs I believe about 20 frames per second, possibly 15. Pretty inexpensive one. It's basically an eBay special type deal. It runs PoE, there's no power connection there on the bottom, just here. So I'll be running a mid-span to actually power all these. I've had this one for a while now, but haven't gotten around to building this server. This is a dome style camera, so I do believe I will have to aim it a little bit, but for 30 bucks, it's pretty tough to beat. So for the power for the cameras, I'll be using an older Power Design mid-span. This model is a Power Design 7012G. On this particular one, you can see there's two rows. There's data in and then data and power out. So there's 24 total ports, but you'd have to divide that number by two. You would only get to power 12 devices because they go in and then come out here with power on the PoE pairs. So I should be able to do about 12 cameras with this setup. In the future, I may upgrade my network switch to actually provide PoE right from the ethernet ports coming off of it, which would make this uh, basically redundant at that point, but it would free up another rack space. Until I upgrade my switch though, I will be using this to power all the cameras and any other PoE devices I happen to get. So this is the intro to my home security system with the custom server that I built, the power design mid-span to power all of the IP cameras that I plan on using. I may do an update video with running the cable to some of these devices and the actual configuration of some of these cameras. I may do a Blue Iris video too if there's interest. If any of you want to see anything in particular or have any questions about the part selection or the way that I set everything up, definitely let me know in the comment section below. And let me know if you have any questions about how to calculate any of the power draw if you are gonna run PoE devices. That is something you are going to have to deal with either running power or powering them from a mid-span like I'm choosing to do. 
If you're interested in MIDI data center type content like this, building servers, PCs, or mining rigs, or mining tutorials, click that subscribe button and the little bell below this video so you get notified by email every time a video lands on the channel. Thanks again for joining today. You can follow us on Twitter at Sam's Tech Stuff, on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Sam's Tech Stuff, or subscribe to the channel. Thank you.